Hello and welcome to the Backyard Machine Shop. What I have for you today is we're going to go inside and look and inspect the bearings and see if we need to replace them or if we just need to repack them. Uh, this is the motor for the K&T uh, 2CH. It's a 5 horsepower Continental motor. Um, it's, I had, when I got the machine it was wired for 440 volts. Now I've changed the wiring to 220. Um, to get this motor inside the mill, you had to remove the pulley and um, a couple other things. So, since I've got it apart this far, I went ahead and cleaned it up. And when I pulled this motor out, it was it was solid black. Uh, I mean, it was horrible. I'm, hands are still a little dirty from from doing that. But I took some degreaser, cleaned it all up. Looks pretty good. As uh, far as I can tell, it looks like the bearings have been taken care of. Typically, if you get a motor that that, um, that you can spin real free and it spins, continues to spin. That means that the bearings have been dry for a while and, and, they're, and they're really free. This one's got some resistance in it, so I'm assuming there's, bear, there's grease in it. But we're going to take it apart. We're going to look at it anyway just to make sure. We'll go ahead and get the size of the bearing and everything. And um, just in case I need them for later on for a restoration, I'll have them. I'll know what I need to order. So if you'll stand by, I'll get the tools we're going to need. And, uh, We'll take this thing apart and check it out. Guys, we got the tools together. And uh, like I said, you notice it spins good, but it stops right away. It, that's telling me that the bearings are going to be all right in this motor, and that's going to be a great thing. But we're going to still take it apart and, um, and check it out. So first thing I like to do is, um, is I'll punch mark the face and the motor housing and that way I know right where they line back up and what side they line back up on okay so now this motor's got a, ma a, a maintenance tag on it and I've, I've got it all wet so it's falling apart and I'm just probably going to remove it I couldn't read what it said I did read where the tag was printed but the information on it if there was any on it I couldn't read so we're going to leave that alone. Well, three-phase motors are pretty easy to take apart. They, uh, they don't have a centrifugal switch in them or anything like that that has to go back together. It's got a little half-inch ratcheting wrench. bottom is still a little greasy. And what I want to do is I want to put this motor back in the mill and I want to run the mill, make sure what's working and what's not before I start working on it. Um, it's hard to do without knowing that.
go get a ratchet. So what we have here now is um let's just drop the wires off the chest. I was hoping it all come off together, but it's like we're gonna have to take it off this way. I usually do this to all motors when I got a machine that comes in. I'll pull it, pull the motor out, check the wiring, clean it up, paint it if it needs to be painted, and um, and check the bearings. And if the bearings are in good shape, seal it back up. If they need to be replaced. Replace them. Be a little aggravating. amount of grease in them but it's it's drying out um, it's more like paraffin now so what we're going to do is we're going to take them apart and repack them and um, you just get this thing running so this side should be easier to try to be as careful as I can Out the um, armature. So, looking at it, it looks good. Now we got to get this end cap off. Um, look at the motor. I'll bring you in. It's got a lot of dirt. All right, and here we are. We're looking inside at the um, at the windings, and um, it's dirty. The insulation looks good. Uh, we'll blow it out, clean it out a little bit, and uh, put it back in service. You see how nasty and greasy it is. That gives you an idea how bad this motor was. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the. Uh, Take off the cat that this hit. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I'll show you what we we ended up getting the, the front housing off. It was a it was a mess. And we ended up having to set it in here like we have it sitting right now, and kind of just take a dead blow and, and and work it off, and then take it and put it on a board, take the shaft, and, and work it around. So we we've got all that off. 
I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the bearings now. Typically, what you want when you pull bearings, you want a bearing splitter. Here's one here. And you got a couple sizes. They go together like, like this. And they'll go around and, um, and, and clamp down. So, like we can use this one here. And um, find the nuts. Normally you want to do this as close to the shaft as you can. However, this one's got a flange that, that's got a keeper on it. And it supports the bearing pretty good. So we're going to just use it to, uh, to pull it off. So we're pulling. we got a flange here. we got a bearing splitter. And then we're going to use a, uh, a two-prong puller here. Because I can't get the uh, to the bolts and the splitter to use the splitter, so we're just going. We're using the splitter right now for support. Keep from pulling on that flange. Okay. And if everything goes good, this will pop right off. So start tightening it up. And um, use something like a hammer handle. There it goes. Here it pop loose. We're not pulling straight, so let's see. Spilling a little blood here. So, steady coming, it's coming off easy. We're nearly there. bearing off and bring it off the flange. So now we can take and clean the bearing up. Here's what I was telling you. It's got grease. So it's, it's a little, it's probably fine. But we're going to take it, it's got a, it's a sealed, a shielded bearing on one side. And that's why you want to pull, when you're taking these things apart, you want to pull on your race. That way you don't damage shields and um, other things. So take this part. All right, it's a uh, 6305. Maybe it's a 6306. I have to measure it to find out. Well, anyway, shielded bearing, um, made in the USA. Yeah, I think it's a 6306. So we'll get our bearing book out in a minute and um, see what bearings we probably won't order bearings for and, and just replace them. All right. So. Got that off. I'm gonna clean all of this stuff when we get done. All right. So now what we want to do?
Okay, I don't like that, so let's go find something that we can use. Alright guys, so oh, and gals, so what we've done here is we need to turn the motor over. I got a I got a chuck here sitting. And what I've done is I've clamped in a piece of tubing so it'll come up and rest on the uh, the rotor and keep from off of the cooling fence. So we're just gonna set it in there where we can rotate it around and work on it. Now the the drive end of the uh, of the motor is captured with a spanner nut and an open ball bearing. So what we have to do is we have to take found a lock and open that lock up. Alright, let's see I don't know if there's another. Good, good, and good. Now we'll bend this one back. We might need it. Get the spanner wrench. So, need to find a spanner wrench, and I've got a spanner here. This one's a little too small. I got one that's too big. So, hoping I can do it with this one. If not, I'll we'll do it with a little brass punch. So, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to do it with this wrench. There we go. You got it. So, get it loose. And um, let's see, hopefully this bearing will slide right off because I don't, if it don't, I don't know how you're going to get to it to get it off. But since it's captured, my guess is just a slip fit. Okay. That the lock washer. Okay. 